just to describe what a narcissistic personality is. Again, they're defending themselves against an injury that has happened when they were very young, when they were made to feel they were a nothing. Does a narcissist know that they are a narcissist? Yes. And that's why you get hooked in such relationships. Oh. That's the problem. Because you would believe that your love is going to finally turn that person around. A narcissist can change, but you cannot change them. Welcome back to the second part of our series here on The She Word titled Living with a Narcissist, It's Not About You. Now, so far in this series, we've looked at whether narcissists are born or made. And in this show, we're going to be looking at whether a narcissist can ever truly change. And I'm with Roberta De Bono Ferrugia, who is a regular with the She Word. Roberta, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank it's you. It's always a pleasure to be here. <laughs> it's always amazing to have you on a show, and it's been, you are kind of the staple part of the She Word as well. Yes. And this show follows on from a show that you were in, which yes. was Surviving the Narcissist, the Narcissistic Abuse, which was yes. the last show in season two. And the response to that show was just phenomenal. Yeah. So many women identified with that. But today I really want to look at where narcissistic personalities come from. And as I mentioned in the first show, we're not talking necessarily about narcissistic personality disorder because that's a whole nother show or, or topic. We're talking about people who have narcissistic personalities so that we're not going to go too much down into the clinical, but we're going to talk about what we need to identify, what we can deal with, what we can see, how we can protect ourselves. But also in this show, we're talking about where does it come from? So I'm going to start off by asking you just again, just as a very, very, very quick couple of sentences, just to describe what a narcissistic personality is. Okay, so I would say that a narcissist would be someone who would, in the first instance, lack empathy. So a person who would find it very difficult to understand what a person, another person is going through. Um, and feel for that other person. So that, I think, would be the, one of the most important things that would make then the person in relationship with someone who is a narcissist struggle. Another thing that um, I would say a narcissist would do would have this kind of sense of grandiosity, kind of the sense that, you know, this person, I am very special and uh, um, everyone else cannot understand my specialness. And they would strive to maintain the specialness. And unfortunately, the way they do this would be by putting others down. So they need to be special. And in doing that, then they need to actually make others feel that they're not as special as they are. And therefore, they would put people down, people around them down, you know. So um, that would be another thing. And they would also have this because they're special. They would be the ones who would be very late, for example, for appointments um, because, you know, they don't care um, and people should be waiting for them. They would be the ones who, um, for example, would um, defy the rules and, and not really care about, you know, social rules. Um, they, they, they'd be kind of um, expecting people with a sense of entitlement that they'll be okay because, you know, they're special. And, and that would make life difficult for those who live with them because then, yes, you, you have a plan to go, I don't know, for a weekend break and who, this person would turn out, turn up very, very late and, and, and almost impossible to, to reach your destination. And they would just brush it off, you know, because mm. they're very busy or, you know, there's I'm always with this air of I'm so important, you know, you have to accept who I am because I am very important. And I think that really um, upsets the people, you know, around them. So I think those are two of the most important things that kind of uh, make, or three of the important things that make the narcissist a, a narcissist. And we're going to deep dive in the third part of this five-part series into mm -hmm. how to identify a narcissist. Mm -hmm. And because there's a lot of complexity mm -hmm. and then there are some very common themes. And of course, there are different types of narcissists, but there are common themes throughout. And you just mentioned that grand grandiose and that opinion that I am very important. Mm -hmm. so, and special. And special, yes. <laughs> so... My first question would be, as we look at where this comes from, 
Does a narcissist know that they are a narcissist? Oh, that's a tough one. Mela. Um, uh, it takes them a while to understand. It does take them a while because I believe that um, they would have become a narcissist or ha would have developed these traits as a protection to something that must have happened when they were young. So when I, I would say that my understanding of a, nar of a person who exhibits narcissistic traits is that at some point they kind of had a difficulty in their primary relationships, so most often with their mother, but it could have been with their father. And in that, they kind of either felt very neglected or very abandoned or very rejected or very unseen. And as a way to react to it, they kind of developed a sense that, you know, I'm so special, people around me can't even understand how special I am, that they almost not see me. And they developed this need to be seen then. And this is a very, very strong um, defense mechanism that they would have. So they grow up thinking that, you know, they're the special ones and people around them are not so special. You know, um, they don't take care of them. They don't love them. And that is a defense that they carry for a very long while. Now, you might say, would that change? I would say everyone changes. Otherwise, I'd pack my bags and, and, and open up a stationery, you know. Um, I am a psychologist. I do believe that people change. But... Uh, some people are more amenable to change than others. And uh, But if I said to a narcissist, uh -huh. you are a narcissist. Mm -hmm. No, they will not take it up for sure. They will not because uh, they do not think they're doing anything wrong. You know, um, uh, so if you say to someone you're a narcissist, um, uh, they would kind of uh, disagree. And in a way, what, what, what you would be doing there would be, you'd be challenging, challenging their defense. So yes, a narcissist can change, but you cannot change them. You Ooh, know? now, because we're having a whole, a whole show yes. about whether a narcissist can change as well. Uh, and we're going to be talking about that a little bit later on. But that's really interesting that you say that a narcissist can change, but you can't you do it. You cannot change the narcissist. A narcissist can change, but with time. I, I had one psychology professor who used to tell me uh, when we were learning all about, you know, um, personality disorders and stuff like that, is that narcissists usually start to understand there's something wrong when they are in their 50s. <gasps> wow. You know? Yeah. So um, usually it is that time when kind of, even because age starts creeping up on them, that they kind of realize or start to question their specialness and their kind of way of doing things. And that's when they kind of go into a little bit of a depression. They kind of go a bit, little bit inside of them and kind of then they might be amenable to change, but through a therapeutic intervention. So when I say you cannot change a narcissist, I really mean it. No, no one in a relationship with a narcissist can change the narcissist. But most often what happens is that the way couples come together is that most often you'd have someone who thinks he's very special, who kind of um, is very attractive for someone who is who thinks that they're not very special, you know? And there, you know, comes the trauma bond. But uh, most often, if you think you're not very special, it means that in your life, you have also experienced people who thought you were not special and you were trying over and over again to get them to see you. Then comes along this person who thinks he's very special and initially would make you feel super duper special, you know, and in making you feel super duper special, then you start feeling good about yourself. Eventually, the traits start to come out and, you know, eventually the person would start to make you feel not so special because he, he or she would need to remain special, you know, so then the denigration starts coming in. So this is where you were start at the beginning, where you start putting someone down to elevate yourself yes. above them. And then that starts yes. to be at the, at the expense of yes. the individual you're with. But if you're in your childhood where you were trying very much to make someone look at you and make you feel special, you get logged in trying to make this person see you as a special person that you are. This is a so the, this so is they, the perfect storm of disaster. Yes, exactly, exactly. What if you could start your journey over, start here and start again there? That's how life works in a circular way. 
we understand the importance of circles. And that's why you are at the heart of ours. Find your way to wellness with Browns. So then, Roberta, is a narcissist, you said you said that narcissists can change, but they cannot be, they have to change themselves. They have to have that journey of self-discovery yes. themselves. But does that mean that, I mean, I, I simply because I cannot believe that someone who is exuding narcissistic behavior over somebody else, whether it be a parent, whether it be a work colleague, mm-hmm. whether it be a partner, whether it be a family member or a friend, I cannot believe that they have no idea of the damage they're causing. Because for that person that are that is on the receiving end, who is being gaslit or being triggered or being mm. put down or being manipulated or being denied and being invalidated, any of those traits, I mean, that is so incredibly dam- damaging and can be incredibly aggressive. Yes. And I'm, I, are, we, are we saying that a narcissist doesn't know they're a narcissist, but they ha- also have no idea what they're doing, that most the damage they, they're causing? Most often they don't because it's a defense for them. So they kind of actually try to put it onto the other person. So if uh, they can, that's why they gaslit, that's why they dismiss, you know, they, that's why they make it the problem of the other person. Again, they're defending themselves against an injury that has happened when they were very young, when they were made to feel they were a nothing, you know. And to, as I said, to build a defense, they make themselves a very special person, you know, and kind of put everything, everyone around them as being the buddy, you know. So if they're the goody, but at the core they also, so the goody is the front, right? At the core is the buddy. So if anyone tried tries to actually access, you know, that that core, which is the body, and tell them, you know, you're harming me, this is not okay, immediately the defenses will go up even higher, you know, because they will not be able to accept that at the core there might be, yes, some body, no, you know, even inside. A hint. Uh, let me explain why. Because sometimes be- they would, because sometimes they would say, oh my God, you know, if they, if they, if they kind of see that they're going to lose a partner, you know, then they might kind of recognize a little bit, you know, oh my God, you know, I might lose my partner. And they might kind of try to regain the partner by saying, yes, I know I've done wrong, etc., etc. But unless there is a therapeutic environment, unless there is some therapeutic support, it's very, very difficult for them not to go back to their usual way of doing things. And this would even be if that person was violent or aggressive or... You know, because narcissists... the way they, they turn it around is that the other person has provoked me, the other person, you know. So, so they really believe this, yes. this so dialogue. This is how they, yeah, this is how they would wow. do it. It would be very, very difficult for them because, again, they're constantly um, uh, projecting, you know, onto the other person. Okay. And this is why it's so hard for them to change. And this is why sometimes it takes years. And sometimes, yes, they might be in their 50s, you know, um, uh, for when they kind of realize, oh, my God, you know, this is not working. I need to do something about it. And then they go in kind of into a slight kind of depressive mode. And that's when they reach out for therapy. That is incredible. But and I know you said that out. before. So, they, so are you actually saying that there's nothing that I can do? No. My behavior can't. Because I think this is something, you know, you and I have spoken about this before and we spoke about it on the show uh, at the end of season two, is that quite often you you as a as an em- empath, as a, mm. somebody who, who experiences sympathy, you can see that they have been through trauma and that they've yes. delivered this narcissistic. And you say to yourself... And you get me even more hugged. Oh, if only I could be more understanding or caring or oh, if only I could get this right that maybe I could change this and that's why you get hooked in such relationships that's the problem you know because you would believe that your love is going to finally turn that person around and no it does not work that way that is absolutely not going to happen it's not going to happen that is it's only going to sink you in more into despair you know because the more you try the more defended the other person will be you know, and, and, and you get caught up in this very, very nasty dynamic. So we are saying categorically that if you're in a relationship with a narcissist, 
whether it be a parent, whether it be a, a sibling, whether it be a family member or a partner or a friend or a work colleague or a boss or whatever it is, there's nothing that I can do as an individual. To change the other person. Change them. All, they you have, need to can, all you can do is change yourself. Learn how to manage it. Which leads me on to the next question. If you are, there are some relationships, we talked about this in, in mm -hmm. season two, there are some relationships with a narcissistic individual that you cannot avoid. Mm -hmm. If you were a parent, you'd have to decide yes. whether or not you're going to, to completely cut off that parent. But if you're in a marriage, let's say, with a narcissist, you've been drawn in through this perfect yes. storm of dependency and of trauma and of of trying to fix that other person. And then you are, you've listened to this show or you've read, listened to a podcast or you've read a book and you've discovered where you're at and what is happening and why. And we're saying now that it doesn't matter who you are, how brilliant and loving and generous and kind you are, you will never be able to change them. Mm -hmm. If you're in a marriage, whether you're a man or a woman, what is the solution? Is it just a case of walking away to protect yourself? I think it depends uh, on the persons. It depends on the readiness for therapy. It depends on uh, um, uh, what they want, you know. Um, uh, I've worked with couples where if that person, I don't know, would have talked to a colleague or a friend about the situation, possibly that those would have told her, run, you know, this famous run um, statement. H however, it does... It can happen that if both persons are very invested in therapy, you know, and in wanting to make something good out of that relationship, yes, then they can start working on it. And yes, I do believe that therapy can work. Obviously, it would need to be a therapist that is very aware of, you know, the dynamics and also um, someone who is not ready to kind of label everything and not see beyond mm -hmm. the label. Mm -hmm. But yes, it can happen. And they don't need to be 50 <laughs> to be able to <laughs> kind of change. But it's very, very hard work. It's extremely hard work. And most often, the individuals would also need a bit of individual therapy. But the more important thing is that the individual therapists are working together as well, you know, that they can work together to support the relationship. Because sometimes, obviously, if you one person just goes for a therapy and the other person doesn't go for a therapy, or if they go to different therapists but who are not in communication with each other, they might not be thinking of the relationship or supporting the relationship. So whenever I'm working with someone, I always refer to people who um, can work with me and that we can work towards supporting the relationship. And yes, then sometimes people can decide, no, this is not going to work. I think I need to leave. But it needs to happen through a therapeutic process, you know? So... I do believe that in marriages and in relationships, yes, the leaving the option is always there and it's important if the other person is not willing to address certain issues in therapy, you know? So if the one of the, 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 the spouses, one of, one of the partners is not ready to go for therapy, is refusing therapy, is kind of going on with this feel of, you know, I, I am okay, I'm good, mm -hmm. I don't need then yes, I think you need to see what to do with yourself and how to protect yourself, whether to whether to stay on the marriage or not, but you need definitely therapeutic help and therapeutic support because it's not easy. You know, one of the things that sometimes happens in these relationships is that you kind of end up cut off from all your support systems, you know, and that's bad because then you do not have a good support system around you to, that, you know, can buffer a bit or can help you reflect and think through what is happening. But if that person is able to have therapeutic support, have other support systems, and is able to learn, in a way, to play tennis, you know, um, I had mentioned this once, um, that when, you know, someone throws all the sh shit onto you, you know what that is not yours, and you can throw it back at them, not necessarily verbally, but even mentally, you know, if, mm -hmm. if someone is telling you you're not good, but you know you are good, and you say, this is all about him and it's all about her, but it's all about, you know, her issues, not mine. Because this is it. Sometimes when I said the defense mechanisms and, you know, the, this badness inside can tend to be projected onto the other person. And to be able to live with someone like that, you need to recognize what is not yours. And you say to yourself, this is not mine. 
But to come there, you need therapy. You need to understand that you deserve better. You need to understand that you're good. You need to understand the goodness that there is. So you don't take in what is not yours, the badness that is not yours. It means that you're able to accept mistakes if you've done mistakes. But when it's not your mistake, when it's not your doing, you are also able to say, hang on, you know, this is not about me. And I think that's why we've titled this Living with a Narcissist, It's Not About You. And I think that's why it's so important to identify that whatever's going on, and you've done so, so clearly through this part of this series, that it's not you. And because it's not you, mm -hmm. there is nothing you can do to change them. That was very profound what you just said that back there, Roberta, that there is absolutely nothing that you can do to change a narcissist they have to be willing and aware to change but you also have to do a lot of work on yourself yeah. and reflect on why you ended up in that relationship Ooh. that is a very big task that you have you know and there's where therapy comes in because you need to look at you know what is my story why is it that I'm always looking for someone who will give me approval? Mm. Why is, am I always looking for an, you know, someone to love me and looking for an impossible person in terms of getting the love from someone who will not love me? You know, so that is the work that you need to do on yourself then. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Will you come back later in the series to finish off? I will. Thank you very much indeed. I You're will. an absolute star. Thank you.